Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. In this case we are going to make a machine gun that kills a wall. Yeah, a wall. It doesn't matter. You can use it in every object you want. We're going to be learning how to merge, how to create the bullets, how to create the flips, how to create web maps and something that is not very often seen in my channel, how to render using Redshift. So stay tuned and watch the full tutorial. Guys, do you want to join a really nice server? We have tons of different channels. We have effects, modeling, loop dev, compositing. We will have resources for every type of discipline. So hop in and have fun. I also have a Patreon page where you can support me. I have every single file, I have polls, I have even some tools, guidance. So if you are interested, you may have a look. Thank you. Okay guys, so let's begin with this amazing file. So let's do a small quality check and let's see how much detail we got here. As you can see, this mesh is quite nice to get some detail. We can also see that we got some particles, so we can have some spray, plus we got some bullets. So let's start going into our project. So to begin with, we're going to need a collision. So the only thing I did was to create a, uh, a cube with these settings. It's only for a wall. And I subdivided it so I can get some more accurate collisions later on. I did a transformation and I merged these two guys together. And I added a grid and I merged it too. Done. Those are the collisions. If you go to out call, I also wanted to make sure that I have some thickness on the ground, just in case, you never know. So I grabbed this, this is the surface, and with a BDB from polygons, because I didn't like this one, uh, I created with these settings, with 0 0.02 and collision, the out SDF. So this is the collision settings. Moving to our actual first simulation, we're going to make the machine gun. So let's create this uh, line. It's only a line set to positive set. I'm going to transform it so it's a little bit high. I'm going to watch the collision in the meantime. There we go. So you can have some context. And we're going to add a noise to the first point. The noise is going to do the following. It's going to be center. It's going to be an amplitude of 69. <laughs> it's going to have an element size of 0 0.04. An animation and a pause process uh, is going to be from 0 to 1. Nothing else is going to make this kind of motion, mainly because the element size is very small. And we're going to create a polyframe with a vector set and the tangent name to velocity. So if we add or if we blast, we're going to see that we have a velocity right here. It's, it's supposed to be a velocity here. Velocity. There we go. It's very small, but I can make it bigger so you can see it. Let me show you. There we go. That's the velocity. So it's inverted, but it doesn't really matter. So what I did is to, with this code, basically the based on the random of the point plus the random of the frame, these two guys. So each frame basically is going to make a new number and a threshold of less than fourteen percent. We're going to remove the point. So you will see it will pop in and pop out. And we're going to layer on top of that 14%. Oh, nothing else. Only 14%. So 14% of the frame we're going to have shots. And we're going to declare a heat frame. Basically, the heat frame is going to be uh, is going to allow us to recognize where or when precisely the bullet hit on the wall or the ground. So we're going to grab some collisions right here. This is this is our uh, particles. And we're going to dive in into our pop network. Inside our pop network, we're going to use all points from the first context and the attribute is going to be minus 50. The bullets are going to go from left to right, as you can see, and you will notice they stay in place. Let me make this uh, this geometry a little bit larger so you can see the points you will see that they stay in place why 
because on the pop solver I added a move to hit and add impact data just in case. Nothing else, there is a gravity, but that's not the case. Uh, I added a ground plane with this bounce and move forward, uh, and I didn't displace the, the geometry. And on the static object, I use surface collision and I grab this open input pass at one, which basically is the first input of or the first context, like the, this one. Well, this is the second context, but it grabs that one. Nothing else at all. And that's my simulation. And perhaps this is uh, kind of difficult, but now I have to declare which frame I am at. So do you remember that we have hit frame? So we're going to show it here, hit frame, and we will see in this solver, which we are getting from uh, our simulation, that we are going to start getting some frames, basically when they impact into the wall. Okay, so what did I do here? First of all, first of all, uh, I created this wrangle. This wrangle is going to say, hey, which is my frame? And I declare the frame which is basically $f. So each frame, I'm going to have that value stored into an integer. Then I'm going to declare something. Hey, has my particle been hit? Well, yes. This this particle started counting that it got hit? Well, not yet. So it's less than the one because it doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to say, hey, my hit frame is equal to frame. My count is going to be plus one. So now I'm going to have a one there counting and I'm going to store these values. So you want to store the value from which I got the velocity or, and from which I got the position. And since I started counting, the next time I, got, I get into this wrangle, I won't be able to basically uh, get this count value. And moving to the next frame, we need to recalculate everything with the values that we did on the previous frame. So we're going to grab the previous frame and we're going to copy this based on ID which I got from the simulation, and I'm going to say, hey, give me the heat frame, give me what you counted, and give me these rest uh, values, nothing else. But update me on the velocity one frame previous, because I want to see not how you ended up being, I want to see uh, the velocity you had before you hit. This is going to be useful later on. So now we're going to dive into our reflection settings for our particles. So this is a collision. We're going to set some normals. This is our particles with the velocities, as you can see, from the previous frame. And we're going to transfer their normals. So now we have some normals. Now, what can we do with this information? Well, reflect the normal. Have you seen that it is a perfect reflection? So this is quite nice if we want to have a direction of the, like a ricochet bullet. So everything that's not hit frame or everything that has hit frame above zero is going to get deleted. So we're only going to see the particles once they hit the wall. Then everything that then the start frame is going to be equal to the hit frame. The start frame is a, is a value that is used on the pi burst, and the normal is going to be what well, equals to the normalized normal. Basically, what I want is to have a direction from which I'm going to have an explosion. Now, let's dive into our first pyro burst. As you can see, it's following the direction of the normal. And let's go rapidly into this. First of all, we're going to go into output attributes and we are going to get the ID. We're going to add some velocity, nothing else, just a little bit of noise. The burst component uh, is going to have basically nothing. It's going to be the same as when you load it in. The burst animation, the overall expansion is going to be six. The frame duration is going to be three. And the burst shape is going to be uh, 8.05 spray angle of 38 and roundness of 0 0.029 with trailing of 3, trailing separation of 0 0.005, trailing length 2 and trailing thickness 1 point, I mean 0 0.195. These are the settings that work on this specific um, situation. And don't remember that the, the normal is very important here, so we're going to use add an attribute. That's about it. We, you can play around with it, do whatever you want. In this case, this worked for me. Now. Let's move here and delete the velocities 
and let's just copy and paste the pyroburst we're going to copy and paste and we're going to basically do this and then do this with a natural copy i'm going to show you why because when we go into our actual copy what i wanted to do which i couldn't quite get with only one is to keep our velocities as you can see these are the velocities but on the left side they are um, based on the normals which i didn't like so i wanted to create exactly the same shape and transfer or copy based on the id i also lost the id on the um, on the run so i wanted to get it back this is the id before we had a problems with id after uh, this cache which i fixed it uh, doing it with a simple copy attribute then I blasted everything from the circle because at, at the very, 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 very first frame we got uh, out, non, out of nowhere uh, blast, which I didn't want, so I blasted it out. And I cache everything like so, so we can have uh, easy access to our uh, hard drive. Let's move to our actual simulations. There are two. So we're going to have this. Um, so we're going to have this first simulation which is this one and we're going to delete these values which i do not want to have i'm going to delete everything but these attributes because everything else i do not want and let's go into our first simulation we're going to grab the collision and we're going to dive into a pop network well basically it's exactly if i'm not mistaken the same as before but with uh, inherited velocity of two we're not going to add a, an attribute and the verse is going to have an expectancy of 0.3 and by variance of 0.02 uh, it's going to use all points use first context geometry and a static object we're going to use the same line of code as before so what i'm going to achieve with this is the following basically a small spray based on all the impacts it looks like a lot, but in render is basically everything is blurred out, so we're not going to uh, realize it's there. So that's the um, the simulation. That's the particle simulation. Let's move into our flip simulation. Here is when it gets quite tricky. We're going to add a little bit of velocity, basically keep coming plus add curl with these settings, and we're going to dive in the simulation. So first of all. We need a static object, but in this case, we're going to grab the collision surface. Plus, we're going to use the volume collisions, volume sample, and we're going to grab the out call SDF as a proxy. That's it. It's basically, we're grabbing these two guys. So, inside here, on the flip object, we're going to have some settings. In this particular case, to get the amount of detail I really want, these are the settings I used. 0.0125, 1 1.4, and grid scale of 1. Remember this, <coughs> each scene is different, so you need to look at it with your settings. So, on physical, move uh, forward 0.9, friction on 0 0.03, and viscosity on 10. I want the liquid to uh, slide a little bit, but then stop sliding. That's my uh, pr this process uh, of thought. Nothing else here. So on the first input, uh, this is the first context. We're going to, we are going to use a pop surface and we're going to dive into attributes and we're not going to add an ID attribute. We don't need it in this case. With a, point, a pop drag of 0 0.001 to increase our, um, um, our drag so it stops on the ground and on the flip solver, remember guys, this is quite uh, a lot of information, so please pause the video if you need. We're going to go from left to right. On substeps, we're going to use two substeps. On particle motion, we're going to go to behavior, and we're going to add these three guys. We will eventually need it, perhaps. On the receding, we're going to use these values. Basically, we're going to have a lot of particles on this uh, over sampling uh, of voxels uh, and this bandwidth. All I'm doing here is to add more uh, particles where I need it. Otherwise, on the meshing, we are going to have a big, big problem. The more particles, the more quality of detail in our meshes. 
so this is always nice no separation no droplets and because droplets we're going to do something on our own on vorticity we're going to add a little bit of vorticity it's always nice to have a little bit because you can do quite nice things i don't know if you're going to do blood or anything else on volume motion we're going to use this solver because it's better it looks nicer and the volume limits as you can see are these ones which i moved a little bit i don't know why but you shouldn't really care right now because it's the, the scale is bigger the scene is bigger on viscosity i enable the viscosity because we have viscosity on physical here then on diversions i add a little bit of diversions and super extension set to two this is a really nice effect because we can add some really long blood stripes on solver i use open cl to make it faster so this is the main core concept but i had a problem where i usually got a lot of particles so what did i do with this what did i do i created a solver from which i'm adding this code so let's dive out and let's do a grid so i can show you what this code really does it's very simple so we had this code I'm going to initialize it with a radius of now oh no, 0.1 and let's do 15 points and let's grab a grid and a scatter there we go now this grid and this scatter will do the following so if the radius or if the mass goes big and big and big and this goes to let's say one okay here we are so let's visualize our mask like so this should be right so let's start increasing our points as you can see the more points you have the more mask we're going to get basically all i'm doing let me uh, re non relax this what i'm saying here is hey how many points do i have nearby let's add in even more 10,000, and let's decrease this value so as you can see the denser zones get a really nice um, value and the points which are far away from everyone else get not so many good uh, average points and the more I reduce this the more I'm going to remain the bigger values into the denser zones and as you can see we're deleting some points because we don't have everything some points are going to be left out, uh, outside they're not going to be part of our simulation so for example this point i do not want this point in the simulation because it will be a pain to mesh it so let's reduce this value until it goes out now all i have here are clamps of values and with this concept based on the radius basically i'm going to draw something what i'm doing here is for each particle i'm making a radius and i'm counting how many points? 37. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. We're going to count the points. And we're, then we're going to divide our total value of points with our total value of points found to get a density. In this case, it will be like, I don't know, uh, 10 divided by 37. So we're going to have a value of less than 1. But it's going to be bigger than 0.1. So this a particle is going to be okay just move to another one for example let's move to this one this one didn't find enough particles to survive and that's the core concept i added this into into this situation this is a really nice value so i didn't got any particles whatsoever only big masses of liquid so basically i will import this simulation with like the so i'm doing a doping profile and drag this here and then I dive inside control C and control V right here I have blasted the flip object so I can only have the particles because I'm not going to use anything else apart from the particles let's wait until we get a, a simulation so now we should have our particles as you can see and you will see some values here these are the mask do you remember well basically everything that got out of uh, a certain value of 0.1 is not going to be here whatsoever it's going to be deleted 
so only big droplets of liquid are going to remain and if they are a point they're going to be deleted after the fact one frame later so that's about it and we have a really nice mass of uh, liquid we're going to delete everything that's not the velocity and the p scale that's the only thing we want and we're going to cache this out so you can have a really nice and uh, cache efficient simulation as you can see it only weighs around 150 megabytes at the end per frame moving forward pay attention because this is really a nice technique to mesh particles we're going to get our particles right here let's move to a frame which is easier to see oh no we need some ground so this one is okay and we're going to be a bdb from particles the bdb from particles is going to grab our p scale and we i what i did is to basically grab my uh, particle separation and multiply it by a lower value for example 0.125 this value worked for me and we have this this looks awful i don't like this so let's reshape it to make it a little bit bigger and let's smooth it out like a lot 32 times now it's starting to look quite nice but let's reshape this so let's make it sm smaller that's why i reshape it larger before and let's do a convert bdbs so this is what we got right now it doesn't look quite nice yet so let's add some normals point normals and let's do a little wrangle this wrangle what it, da what it does is to flatten out all of my uh, ground surface and grabbing a, a normal uh, y direction so basically this is uh, like a threshold and a, a y position then I'm going to say, hey, is the position less than zero? Then my position is going to be on the y-axis to 0.001. That's all it does. Let's see. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. Now, if my normal position is less than the threshold, hence is not po is pointing kind of like this downwards, and my position is less than this value. So if we are less than this value we're going to go into this solution my position y-axis is going to be based on the fit from my normal where my normal is and this is going to be like the roof of the normal the normal y position and it's going to work from minus one because the only possibility of the maximum negative is minus one because the normals are normalized and the position is and we're going to grab the actual position and we're going to be setting this to 0 0.001 same as here basically uh, what i'm doing is to is grabbing the normals as you can see this involves the edges and it's like a i'm using this as some sort of mask on the edges basically i didn't want to have uh, this rough looking shape at the bottom because this on render time is going to create some artifacts so i flatten it out so you can use this whenever you want. We're going to, it going to, it's going to create some artifacts here, but with the motion blur, you're barely going to notice it at all. And then we are going to may be making, based on the same idea as before, on the density, a mask. But this mask, in order to work, is going to need an adaptivity of 0 0.005. Basically, I'm grabbing the edges. That's all I'm doing. Because on the edges it has some more polygons, some more points. So I'm going to blur this out a lot, like a lot, the CD. And based on the color, I'm going to use this function. So what does this function do? Let's go into a nicer zone, for example, this one. It's going to push inwards. It's going to push our mesh inwards, which is quite nice. And I still feel like we need something else, which is, in this case, a real big blur on the position, based on the CD. And with this set, we are ready to go into our normals. We're going to delete our CD size and name attributes, because we don't want it. And we're going to transfer the velocity from the simulation, so we can have some velocity and motion blur. 
and we're going to cash this out if you want. I didn't do it because I didn't need to cash this out. So moving on into the frames uh, from which I'm going to get the bullets, we're going to grab this and say, hey, if the hit frame is less than the frame and the hit frame is not equal to minus one, remove the point. So I'm only going to have moving particles right here. Also, we're going to do uh, this calculation, which is the position is going to be less than or equal to the velocity multiplied by the timing. This value is necessary in order for this to work. Otherwise, we're going to have some issues like so. It's going to just move somewhere else. So let's add this here and an extrapolation frame, which is 0 0.0518. Basically, it's like calculating based on the incremental of the substep. And the end is going to be equals to one, just so we can have a, an idea of working on this. We're going to merge these guys together and we're going to add them based on the ID. We're going to do a polywire, a color, so we can see it. And we're going to blast everything that's the heat total is bigger than a one, because remember that we used to have a particle which was uh, interesting. <laughs> well, I deleted that particle with this solution. And those are the bullets. So we finish all our simulations when it comes to uh, water and explosions. Moving on, moving on, and this is optional, guys. We're going to make the wet map. The wet map is basically everywhere that uh, uh, a particle touches, we're going to have like some moist there. So we're going to grab our collision and we're going to create some UVs. Now we have UVs with a UV layout based on an island position. We're going to grab our UVs and we're going to scatter some points here with different um, global seeds. So when we merge it, we get a really dense and packed information of points. And we're going to say, hey, this is not wet because it hasn't been uh, in, in contact with liquid yet. So we're going to visualize this. We're going to say, hey, wet, everything is zero, as you can see. The, we're going to grab the fluid compress and we're going to say, hey, this is wet. Yes, it's wet. That's all it. We are going to grab our scatter and we're going to grab our wet and we're going to dive inside a solver. So let's dive inside. It's going to calculate. So what I'm doing here, I'm grabbing the previous frame, which basically gets our data and we're going to add our um, liquid, which has um, a wet of one. And we're going to transfer based with a, a threshold of zero blend width of 0 0.025 what the what we're going to blur this out just a tiny bit and based on proximity but a little bit only a step size of 0 0.05 this is the uh, attribute the what and we're going to subtract each uh, frame or sub step in this case this value if the what is bigger than the threshold and that's our what map it looks something like this quite simple quite easy to achieve amazing and as a final step we're going to make the textures of it so i'm going to do a quick shade from this little guy which already has uvs and we're going to select just wait a moment this texture so we can see it properly so what you can see is that we got the wet map of our scatter but on the uvs so this is actually an image look at this only 29 megabytes of image this is very important because this will require you to subdivide the mesh a lot and you will always get problems so how did i do this so what it is to get a bob cop generator and i did the following they did the following you follow along I get the X and Y position, which are the X and Y position of our UVs. And I made it into a vector and I grab it into the position. And in the PC open, I, uh, with the middle mouse click, or with the left mouse click, ex uh, oh my God, said, with the middle mouse click, said promote parameter. This will open the possibility to add a point cloud texture. So what I did is to go here, control C, get inside, and basically here, do control V. And let's add an OP dot with double points. The OP 
says, hey, I'm inside Houdini. You don't need to look into a file because this is not a file directory. I added uh, a 2K image size, basically it's a square for the UVs. And then I use a PC filter based on our wet values. This will go into the RGB. This is going to give us this image on the compositing. Let's go into the compositing and let's visualize this. These are the UVs as you can see. If we move these values like, I don't know, 2.2, it's going to be get larger and larger and larger. Let's do, you know, 0.1. We should visualize this. There we go. So let's do, I know, 0.21. I'm going to grab all our values. It's still calculating. So the only reason we are not seeing this go higher is because, if, as you rem remember, all of our points are right here, but we also get some points here. So we are not leaving it so much threshold in order to to make it move outside. We could delete all these particles and have a little bit more of control, but in this case, it was enough. So, so I'm going to go back, back into the detail I wanted to have, and that's going to be about it. Basically, I'm going to have like a one-to-one -one representation of our particles, but I'm going to blur this out just a tiny bit because I, I don't know, I wanted to blur it a little bit, see? Then we're going to do a null, which is going to be the out texture, and on the texture, we're going to add a raw file output with uh, the directory of your choice. I chose hip, text, dot uh, and uh, jpg. JPG. <laughs> and we're not going to convert the format uh, color space and we are going to reload all files. This is going to be ba based on the main and this is the frame range because it's an animation. But we cannot just click here. At least I couldn't. So what I did is to do a control C and let's do a top network. This is going to be our exporter. We're going to get a raw fetch. Guys, you need to understand this right now. But basically, I, I said, hey, grab this uh, raw output, do a frame range. And that's how it is. Also, what I did is go into the local scheduler and do all my cores but one. Yes. So shift B. Save and continue, and you will have all your textures. Okay, guys, so diving in at our render settings, first of all, we need to do a Redshift renderer. Here, we're going to set up a couple of things, like, for example, the motion blur set to the form and instances particle blur, because, like, as you see here, there are some particles, and they do have motion blur. So, uh, in globals, we're going to use the ACES OSHO file rules so we can have a better lighting and we are going to use brute force and brute force both to 16 on sampling don't use automatic that will slow down everything use 16 and 2000 and I mean 256 <clears throat> and nothing else nothing else here and don't render to and play if you are rendering the sequence because that might slow you down that's how it is. there's nothing else here so we could go we can go to the objects uh, all i did here is was to grab the outputs so the blood the spray the bullets the the ground basically the ground i selected uh, the ground and i split it out which is this one of course uh, and the walls the walls are the same but the opposite so the only thing here is that on the spray I change this to particles and render objects particles and ignore this scale so I, everything has the same scale so I use 0 0.005 here on settings mesh deformation blur for velocity here and here these two guys don't need anything and this one either so once we go into our materials like here this is the blood the blood will get the particles and also the splashes so it is a very simple material it has a diffuse set to zero in this case i didn't want any color so it's basically the same as black but we can go all the way to the top with the base color i don't recommend it black is good in this case or perhaps a little bit like point zero one perhaps to have a little bit of reddish here glint but i didn't want so that's okay for me a roughness of 0.01 and an IOR of 
will be good. 0.3 is the IOR of the blood. <clears throat> and the refraction set to this color will give you these kind of edges. And a dispersion of 70 will give, up, will give out a little bit of chromatic aberration, even though you cannot see it here. That's about it. This doesn't do anything to the solution. So let's keep it like that. That's the blood. So what I'm going to do is to hide now the blood and to hide the spray. We want to take a closer look at these materials. As you can see, this is um, this is basically the the wood map. Now, how is the wood map done? First of all, let's go into our wall or our ground. It's the same. <clears throat> and as you can see, this is a redshift material. Redshift materials work like this. They give you a redshift tree planner. They have these outputs connected here and they are output to the material. That's how it is. Everything at the top is basically an addition. Also this one. This should go here if it's standard, right? So what did I do? First of all, let's look at our texture. What is this? Well, this is our uh, texture which we created. This is the same file we output it. So what I'm doing here is to basically changing the values, inverting it here and combining it with a multiplication. As you can see, there are some uh, original texture here and there with the original tree planner, with the with a, which I set it with this offset and this scale. Also, this will go straight to the roughness, but I also want to have some speculars where, wherever is black. So I inverted it again and I control it a little bit. So now we have a lot of specularity here and a lot of roughness here. So it's opposite. Here we have low roughness and a lot of specu specularity and here low roughness and not so much. Uh, specularity. That's how it. And when it comes to the actual shader, we did something like this. We grab the occlusion from the edges of the wall and we excluded, if we go here, uh, the spray and the blood, we excluded the ambient occlusion. Otherwise, we would get occlusion here and here. Well, now it's turned off, but you get the idea. So, going inside here, what I did is to also ramp it a little bit so we can be more uh, more uh, delicate with it and I connected the diffuse what did I do with the diffuse basically I controlled the gamma with it so you can see we have a little fade off here and we can control it with this volume so it's a lot stronger or harder so that's how it uh, then this will be set to the following what I want to do is to have a variant right here, which is a little bit darker, and that also is multiplied with a color. And this color is going to be mixed with what? With our mask. We can, of course, control it, but this is all I need so far. So I can control and I can adjust the color of our wet map. Moving on. That's how it. <laughs> There's nothing else. Just plug it in here, and you will see. There is a little bit more that has to do with the bump map. I created uh, the texture, the bump map, and I connected into the bump blender with the original normal map being adjusted to 1.5 here, and creating a little bit of an extra uh, bump information. If you go into here and bump it out a lot, we should see it, but it is very, very a small, a small detail. So there's nothing else I should show you here. The same goes with the granite rock. It's the same setup, nothing different. This is, well, the wall without, um, only with the occlusion. And the bullet is only as you can see here, a diffuse material, I mean a standard material, which I chose the gold preset and it went to overall emission to 1, this 10 and this 2.66. So if we go and see a bullet, I guess there should be a bullet somewhere on here. Well, perhaps not in this frame. Yeah, 
not in this frame. But there are bullets. Let's go to another frame then. Here there is a bullet. Okay, all right. So let's press play. And our bullet has the proper velocity and we can control everything that has to do with the material of the bullet. If you want more, we can have more and, mo and even more. But I didn't want this glitch to happen. So it did stay at one. And another trick, you can see there is some kind of light. This is not from the actual material. This is from a light. So the, we have an HDRI. I chose uh, basically uh, uh, an HDRI. You know, you can change the the light into whatever you want. You can do something creative like this. It's, it is really fun to mess around with this. And as you can see here, we do have something going on. This is actually a bullet mesh. So I grab the light, went to shape, mesh, and I can control with this light how much light this is emitting. Okay, this is so strange. Let's go back to 12. Basically, and I can have more and more light and it works flawlessly. Let's go back to normal. Two was right, yeah. And that's how it. There's nothing else here to see. I hope that you like it, guys. Hi, guys. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. Please, please, please stay tuned for more videos. Like, comment, subscribe. Do whatever you want. See you until the next one.